Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the power of blogging and branding. And I promise that you guys are going to learn a lot today from the three great panelists that we have here. And we're not going to spend time doing a lot of introductions and stuff. I'm going to kind of let them introduce themselves so that we can just get right into it and get to the information. And we'll leave some time at the end for you guys to ask some questions. And I hope there'll be lots of them. And uh, I hope you'll try and stump them. And <laughs> But first we're up, we're going to have Zach Johnson. And Zach is the president and CEO of Money Rain. And if you're not uh, checking out his blog, you definitely should be. You can learn a lot from him. He's been doing this a long time, despite his youthful appearance. And right now we're going to hear from Zach. So uh, enjoy. I've been uh, making money online for about 15 years now, so this presentation is going to be a transition of what I've done from the beginning when I first started to where I'm at today, and that's basically internet marketing through blogging to building your own brand. Uh, as mentioned, I've been doing this about 15 years. Just started blogging about five years ago. In 1997, I found out about Amazon.com and a few other websites that would pay you to send people to their website and you would earn a commission whenever someone completed a sale or, or a transaction. So this got me into the world of affiliate marketing, which continued to progress over time. In 2005, I created a website called myspacenow.com and it was a website where someone could take graphics and place it on their web page, on their MySpace page, and it would then send them back to my website if they wanted some more resources. That website went on to generate over $800,000 in profit within four months and was pushing over 100,000 people to the website every day. In 2007, I decided to start ZachJohnson.com, which is my personal blog. And the focus on that blog is to teach people how to make money online while also discussing everything that I've done over the years. Uh, in 2010, I started another blog at bloggingtips.com, which I acquired through a website called Flippa. And that's a uh, a website focused on authority, WordPress blogs, and how to make money through blogging. Current other projects I'm working on right now are ppc.org and blogging.org. This is a screenshot of zachjohnson.com. We're going to go through a few of my different websites, and then we'll talk later on about how I'm monetizing them and what you can do to grow out your own websites and brands. This is a screenshot of bloggingtips.com. Uh, this is what it looks like on the main page about a few months ago and I'm going to show you what it looks like today to uh, get a lot more subscribers than just sending them to a regular landing page. Screenshot of ppc.org, website focused on pay-per-click marketing. And this is blocking.org, which is a marketplace for writers and bloggers to connect to create original content. So what does it take to become a serious blogger and build your own brand? I've made my own list of about 10 different things, everything from creating a logo, having a custom design, focusing on your content, building your brand name, getting it out there on the social networks, taking time to do guest blogging, blog commenting, creating your own mailing list, having a monetization strategy, and at the same time, take advantage of every opportunity that you might come across. So why do you need to have your own logo? You need to stand out. Right now, you're at Affiliate Summit, and you're going to meet a lot of people. Some people are going to stand out, and a lot of them are going to forget. What are you going to do to stand out? When I launched my blog at ZachJohnson.com, I made sure I had a mascot and a tune that people would remember. And it's a very well-known figure in the affiliate marketing space, and it's one that I will continually use for years to come because the branding has worked so well. It doesn't cost a lot of money to create a logo, but it will make you a lot of money over the years, so it's an investment that everybody should do. There's a few recommended websites where you can get a logo designed. Having your own custom theme is nearly just as important. There's millions of blogs out there. Right when you set one up, it has a default, a default theme, and it looks the same. So you're pretty much just lost in the crowd. Custom themes can cost a lot of money, but there's a lot of premium themes out there that are only around 60 bucks each. So here's a few other sources where you can uh, get custom designed themes. I've always made sure to have uh, ZachJohnson.com have its own custom theme, because I want to leave a lasting impression. Quality content is always king. It's why people come to your website in the first place. Here's a listing of some of the most popular blog posts that I've written over the past five years. Obviously, people want inspirational articles that make them want to learn how to make more money online. 
and teach them how to do stuff. The first post, how I made 860,000 profit in four months, that breaks down the whole process of how I created the MySpace Now website, all the advertisers I used, going from a shared server to over 10,000 a month in server cost. A very useful source with over 410 comments. So continually get emails on this. And then the rest of them are pretty much guides that teach people how to first start making money online or use templates. Branding your name and business. Again, using the mascot and the Zach Johnson name, been able to make a nice brand for myself over the years. And uh, if you're going to have a website, no matter what you do, you should try and register yourname.com because there's other people out there in the world with your name, and if it's still available, there's a good chance someone else is going to get it first. Always go with the .com, .net, and some great websites for grabbing domain names that are registered and that you might think you would never be able to get are Namejet and Pool. Exposure on social networks is extremely important because people are not using RSS feeds and actually visiting websites like they used to. They're getting their information through the search, through the social networks, and it's way too easy to create your own pages on Twitter, Facebook, Starry, and people can just follow you and you can send all of your blog updates right to the people through the social networks. Guest blogging is exploding right now since Google is going after websites that are not using ethical methods for link building, people are guest blogging on other websites. When you post an article on another website, you usually get a link back. So it's a free thing that you can do to build links back to your website while getting listed on high authority websites. You also get a full bio and link back to your website as seen in this picture here. Blog commenting. Everybody pretty knows what that is. You just uh, go to websites and leave your comment and if you leave a trash comment, it's probably going to get deleted. If you leave a good comment, people will value it, and then they might even go back to your website and become a reader of your blog. Some blogs will give you link juice if you leave a comment, and others will not. But either way, you want to provide value and make sure that your content is valuable to the people there so they come back to your website. Mailing lists are one of the best ways to get people to come back to your website. Earlier I showed you the main page for bloggingtips.com and that was what the main blog looked like. So now I changed it over to this design where it's an actual landing page. So you get to the web page and if you want to get to the blog you can click on the top right where it says blog or you can put your email address in which has a very high conversion rate. So once you put your email address in, into this form you get sent to the blog but then you're on the mailing list so you'll receive all future updates and I can continually uh, staying in contact with all of my readers. Monetization is key in blogging. It's not easy to just throw up a blog and start making money. It's one of the most unrealistic ways of thinking. So if you want to make money, there's always banner advertising, creating your own product. But first, you're going to want to establish your own brand and know who you're marketing to. And take advantage of everything. You're going to meet a lot of people here. Some will provide value, some won't. But you never know down the road who's going to uh, possibly connect you with that right person. Uh, networking at events, you're already here, so you're making the effort right now to connect and build your brand. Guest post, as mentioned, that's important, and be passionate about the topic because you don't want to lose interest in what you're blogging about. You can read a post on how blogging has changed my life at ZachJohnson.com. Everything from being on Fox News to ABC News to keynote speaking in Australia, all of that is accomplished because of my blog at ZachJohnson.com. And this is just some uh, information where you can contact me and download this presentation at my website. Uh, next, we'll have John speaking. All right, today um, I'm going to be talking on tips to building authority. Um, Zach talked a lot about uh, almost same, a lot of the tips that I'm going to be talking about, but I'm going to be going into a little bit more details on what I've done to build uh, authority sites. Um, I am the founder, along with Zach, of blogging.org and ppc.org. I've been doing pay-per-click marketing since 2003, so if you ever have any 
pay-per-click questions. I'm pretty good at pay-per-click. Um, and also there's my contact information below. Um, so I'm going to walk you through step by step. Uh, one of my sites was called Techie Mania, how I took it from nothing, starting up, registered it, and in nine months uh, I had a thousand plus unique visitors a day, below 12k Alexa, and a page rank of four plus two thousand dollars a month in revenue. I was able to do that all in a nine month span of time. Um, so here are my five steps to building an authority blog. So first of all, you need to know what keywords you're going after. And blogging this is really important in building a company. It's really important to really focus yourself and know what you're trying to do. One way I do this is Google Keyword Tool. Um, Google Keyword Tool, you can type in um, whatever keyword or niche you're thinking of doing, and it will give you tons of different examples and how many people are searching for those particular keywords that'll help narrow your scope and really focus on specific things you're going to talk about. Um, second step is have a quality hosting provider. Um, two hosts that I really like using are Net Hosting and Amazon. Both of these offer free hosting with a really good server for one year. You can go to nethosting.com slash startup or aws.amazon.com slash free. Both of those will give you one free year of hosting for pretty much whatever your needs are. Um, now this is, this is one, it's not for everyone. This is what I personally do um, to get authority very quickly, is I write four to six quality blog posts a day. This is a lot of content. But like I say, I like pumping out content to get a lot of authority really quick. Um, each one of these posts needs to be 500 to 1,000 words in length. I only put in three links per post. Each one of those links will go to other blog posts. Um, and make sure when you're writing these posts or having other people write these posts that you're putting up quality content. Nobody wants crap. Nobody will read crap. No one will link to crap. So you need to put up very quality posts. Uh, and then another key to it is having a great title. Don't just write any title. Write a title that's very engaging to the reader, that a person that you would want to read. Um, I also recommend commenting on 20 different blogs a day, Monday through Friday, Monday through Monday if you can. Um, I always try and have very, very valuable comments, but also the very first comment. I find that every comment I make on average drives five to 10 people back to my website. So this is really valuable because if you make a valuable comment, typically the blog owner will come back to your site and look at your site. Also people who are reading the article will come back to your site. Um, I also like guest posting. As Zach mentioned, there's a lot of different guest posting. It's very hot in SEO because links, it's helping you get quality links back to your site from other sites. Um, I pu I've put together a list of hundreds of different very high authority sites. You can find that at blogging.org slash guest post. And that'll list out what their Lex is, what their page rank is, where you can sign up, and everything about it. Um, this uh, site that I put together in nine months, I ended up selling on Flippa for a little over $15,000. So I like building sites, I get kind of bored. I don't know if you guys, but I am ADD prone. So I like building up a site and selling it. So I listed it on Flippa. And here are a couple tips for selling your blog if you do want to exit out of your blog. First of all, don't sell crap. Nobody's gonna buy crap, and if they do buy it, they're gonna come back and be pissed. Um, second, have verifiable everything. Make sure you're keeping track of what you're doing, how much you're making, um, comments, stats, how many posts there are. Um, I always start everything when I really want to sell a site and I don't want to keep it. I always start it at no reserve on Flippa. That means a person could essentially buy my site for a dollar. And I know also that when people buy that site, it will go for the worth that I put into it. Um, again, here's my contact information. Uh, got my cell phone on there. If any of you have any questions, or anything to do with blogging, give me a call at any time. I'm also big on Twitter, at JS Rampton. Okay. This is a PC, how do you shut this down? <laughs>
Start yeah. slash him. Yeah, try that. Don't. Slash him, right? Do do? All right. Uh, Max so much easier. I don't get it, but oh, wait. Okay, everyone. Um, John and Zach pretty much cover everything I want to talk about. So uh, I'm just going to show you three, three things that can drastically increase your brand and how you can stand out from every other blogger that's out there. All right, uh, I am the, officially the founder and CEO of TTZ Media Inc. TTZ is a, uh, it's, a it's, the, it's my umbrella company that holds all my websites and stuff. But uh, most people know me as the blogger who makes money online by telling people how much money he makes online. Okay. Uh, I worked at a job for a grand total eight months of my entire life. First job was McDonald's. I lasted four hours before I quit. <laughs> Second job was uh, selling. I was a phone solicitor for a copy clean company. I was lasted about two weeks before I got fired. And my final job was selling car audio for A and B Sound in Vancouver. And I lasted about seven months before they cut me from that job. After that, I concluded that uh, working sucks and I never did it again. And yeah. Other facts, I've been online since 1998. I've been doing affiliate marketing since 2000. I went up with the dot-com boom, went down with the dot-com crash, currently riding the second wave, and I am a self-confessed tech geek. In fact, I'm so much of a tech geek that uh, when my, before my daughter was born, and uh, my wife and I were deciding on names for her, uh, I made sure her domain name was available before I named her. Okay, so. Uh, SallyChow.com. Her blog was started three months before she was born. The uh, first blog post was a picture of an ultrasound, and the title said, I'll be live soon. <laughs> and she has her own Twitter account. You can follow her at Sally Chow. And like every other five years old, she has her own Apple iPad. You know, I can really tell that Sally's growing up in the iPad generation. A few months ago, I asked her to do something that she didn't want to do, and she did this, she did this to me. <laughs> See, kids today, they don't give you the finger, they, they, they besize you. <laughs> so uh, this is my blog, and it's not, I'm not showing the front page of the blog, I'm showing the about page of the blog, right? because branding starts at the about page. And I'll be, I'm, I'm always completely shocked at how many bloggers do not have an about page. Uh, the, the about page is your second most viewed page after your front page. It's where people are going to find out what you are and what you do. So you should spend a good amount of time making sure your about page is top notch. So in my about page, I have a video. I got information about what I do. And definitely, because uh, I would say, of all the blogs I visit, I would say half of them don't even have a boat page. And it's, uh, it, that's where branding starts at. Branding starts at a boat page. It's, your, it's gonna be your second most viewed page because if somebody likes your blog post, they're gonna wanna find out more about you, so they're gonna obviously look for where's your boat page? Who is this person? And if you don't have that, they don't know who you are. All right, uh, second thing you should do to stand out from the crowd is basically write your own book. Write your own book. Now, that sounds hard, but actually it's a lot easier than you think. See? When, uh, before I had a e-book, and what I know I did was I just took the e-book, and, and I just 
turn that into 30,000 words, or actually 50,000 words. And actually, I didn't really do it. I just hired a, I just hired a writer. And basically, it's still my stuff. It's my idea. I just didn't, and in this case, uh, I wrote it with Michael Kwan. I gave him a byline. So we shared a byline. I just, uh, so I started with my original ebook, and I said, turn this into 50,000 words. And he did it. So by publishing your own book, it gives you instant credibility. You are, suddenly, you are now the go-to person. You know, it doesn't matter if there's two bloggers up here. I am the published author. And that, just by, uh, that, that, by having my own book, I interviews, keynote presentation. I was invited to give a keynote to the Society of American Travel Writers in Germany. Right? And soon because I'm a published author. And this idea was given to me by uh, my good friend Joe Calm. And uh, the way he told me it was pretty funny. He said that, John, you need to write your own book. And I go, why? Because if you write your own book, you'll go from ebook scammer to published author. <laughs> and that elevates your brand tremendously. And he's right about that. So a few tips about writing your book, you know. Yeah, it's like you go from blogger to published author. You instantly become an expert. You don't have to write it yourself. You can hire a ghostwriter. You could buy a private label book if you want. There are books that you can just already pre-written that you can just tear the cover off and put your name on it. I mean, I recommend you actually do your own book, but uh, for, if you just want to, you just want to show, not to say people, you just want to show that you have a book, you can do that. And you can self-publish yourself on uh, using a service like createspace.com. It's a service by Amazon where you just upload a Word file and I believe it's about $600 and they'll give you the ISBN number and uh, print on demand. It gets listed on Amazon so you, you will now publish off on Amazon and they can buy the book and it's a physical book and Amazon prints it one at a time. So you can say, I sold out my publication because it's only one at a time, right? <laughs> I'm a best-selling author. <laughs> and the next thing, the third thing that uh, I think everyone should have to, uh, for branding is to have a demo video. A demo video is one to two minute video explaining what you are, who you are, and what you do. And uh, does anyone here actually have a demo video for themselves? Now, how are you going to stand up in a crowd? This is one way to stand up in a crowd. So I'm going to show you this is my demo video. And it's uh, just two minutes long. It's on, it's on my blog in the above section. It's on my iPhone. It's on my iPad. So when I meet someone at a trade show, they ask me, what do you do? Instead of going for a whole spiel, I tell them, play this. And they can play them some. Right? So this is, the demo, this is the demo video, and that's how this works. Ah, crap. <laughs> how come we didn't start? If you want to be a millionaire, how to make the money from John? Imagine being so excited that you can't go to sleep at night. And the reason you can't sleep is because you discovered the power of making money online by blogging. I really didn't believe in the blogging industry before. I didn't really see a way to make money from it. And from what John showed me, even just a few simple steps and quick slides, even with his daughter online, I'm a total believer. The power of the dot-com world and how he's utilizing it very effectively and spending quality time with his, with his little daughter. When uh, my wife and I were having our kid, one of the first things I did before we named her, I made sure her domain name was available. One thing I can say about John is that this guy is genuine. He is real and his level of ethics is one which I've never seen before. I'm the mayor. <laughs> the mayor John Chow, causing coffee. <laughs> You're one of the best of the best. I really appreciate John. He's giving, 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 giving all day. He's sitting on his blog and he's giving away stuff. He's putting away his entire system is on the blog. He's not charging a penny for this. Time and money. You enable people to stay at home and generate money while they're sleeping. It's absolutely brilliant. It can work while we're sleeping. But John Chow taught me literally revolutionized the way I thought about how I speak to my customers, how I speak to my database, and even approach them. It was literally remarkable. He just gave me all the tools I need. 
Never in my wildest dream would I imagine myself being able to live anywhere I want in the world and make money doing it. The internet, social media, internet marketing has allowed me to live this kind of lifestyle. Now, can you see how having a demo video can definitely get your message across? I mean, this room, nobody has a demo video. So if you have your own demo video, you just elevate yourself above everyone else. You'll get, you'll get more business. Reader come to your blog, they see that. You just, in two minutes, you just explain what, I just explain exactly what I do, and now you, that's all you probably want to find out more about me. So a few tips about making the demo video. One to two minutes long, generally the shorter the better, because people have the intention span of a gant on crack. Stick to no more than three key points. Like, don't try to tell your entire life story. In my case, I just stick to the key points. Blogging, make money while you're sleeping, and basically that's about it, right? So, have testimonials, because, you know, it's one thing to say that I'm a great blogger, but when you show video of other people saying you're a great blogger, the effect is totally different. And when it comes to getting testimonial, you should uh, try to get female testimonials because a female are generally considered more trustworthy than guys. Show the results in a testimonial. Like, uh, instead of saying that he's a great guy, he's you know, fantastic, fantastic, try, testimonial, try to get results. So that because of John Chow, I was able to do this. Or because, so try, try to be results-oriented testimonial. Hmm. And always have the demo with you. Like I said, I have, demo, I have my demo with me everywhere. It's on my phone, it's on my iPad, it's available to me anywhere, and that's what I use when I'm making a pitch to somebody, when I'm, people here at Philly Summit, when I'm, you, know, you meet somebody who can give you some of business, play the demo. And you know, it's not that hard to make a demo video. Matter of fact, you can do it the same day. And I'm doing a demo video for this session right now. And one of the things I did was uh, I already talked to some people. I was on a video. How many people have I speak to right now it's on this camera? Right? So, and what I've done is uh, generally that's called a pre-session. And I asked them what are they expecting from today's session. And so I'm asking them what they expect. So I'm kind of like already pre-concepting their mind. So after the session is over, I'm going to go back to those people and ask them what did you, did you learn, what you want. Right? And that's. There's no fancy thing, no fan, uh, just all, like in my demo video, I, ha I had cut scenes from different locations and stuff, but you can do it all in one location. And this is an example of a demo video that I did for the Costa Mesa Connectors. And we did it, it was just a thing, it was a meetup, a morning meetup. I got the people speaking and just uh, did the demo, one location, put it all together, and it took a rental about one hour. So. So it's, it's not hard to do, it's really easy, and it will definitely make you stand out from everyone else. Ah, crap. Did it again. <laughs> Costa Mesa Connectors is an opportunity for people to come together, whether they're in transition, they're in transition or they're in a situation where they have a business, small business in the, area, in the area. So people come together, and it's all in the spirit of sharing. This is my second meeting for CMC and uh, I really appreciate the diversity of the people I'm meeting. Very valuable information. Every time I come, I learn something new. Oh, it was wonderful. Wonderful. Met lots of people. I made some great contacts today. Uh, I listened to a great speaker about how to uh, use my website more efficiently. The opportunity to talk to people like yourself and exchange ideas, chance to practice and learn more and see where I can help people. I thought Steve was an excellent speaker. Oh, today's training was incredible. The way he spoke, he broke it down to everyday language. That is by far the best internet training I've seen in my life. I was blown away, and then the fact that he referred to you, and you just uh, chimed right in, you know, with the right answer, and everything just built upon each other. We meet once a month on the second Friday in Costa Mesa. I have about 500 people, a little more than that, on our LinkedIn. Come join us. It's from 7 to 9 on Friday. 7 to 8 is in groups, a little networking, get to meet people. And from 8 to 9, we always have a group facilitator, coach, get to learn something. I 
I did this demo video for them, just using my iPhone, just talking to people that attended there. They added that, this demo video to their, to their page, to the blog, to, their, to the LinkedIn group. And uh, the number of people that the last meeting was actually this Friday, and the attendance doubled. So, uh, and because, as far as I know, they're the only group now on, well, they're the only group in this category in that area that has a demo video. Right? So, uh, that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Was, okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. So, uh, that's uh, three things, you know, success, uh, branding starts at the about page. You should write your own book, and you should definitely have a demo video. Right? So, here's where. Uh, you need to contact me. The uh, best way is to do this by email. Uh, I don't have a phone, so don't call me. And I guess we'll take questions now, right? Yeah. Thank you, guys. That was great. I'm sure there must be some questions out there. So who wants to? OK, right there. All right, the application I use to make the demo video, like I said, I just. For the, most of the time, I just use my iPhone, you know, just the, the video recording the iPhone. And then uh, to process the video, I just use iMovie. You now, you could use Windows Movie Maker, but there's no need to get fancy. You don't need like Adobe Premiere or some ultra expensive editing, video editing software. Uh, that, both, of those, both of the two demo videos on here was edited with iMovie. We have a question right there. Well, if you, depending on the niche you want to go after to promote your own stuff, I would personally go after whoever the best players are in that niche and see if you can possibly link up to them and start guest posting on their website or whatever. But in terms of linking all of your different niches together, I'm not sure if that's the monetization plan or if you just want to promote, I would uh, segregate them into finding who the leaders are in that area and try and connect with them as much as possible. I think we had one right here. Yeah. Um, I heard that you can post on your blog and have it go automatically to your Facebook. You know, there are there are plugins that will do that. So uh, it's yeah, it's a social media a social media plugin. There's also um, what's the other sh the share the share bar. They can do that for you as well. Uh, yeah, there there are various WordPress plugins that will automatically send your post to Facebook, to Twitter, and to every other social media site. Uh, the one I use on my blog is called ShareBar. Yeah. We have a question right here. Uh, yeah, so I, whenever I'm selling a site that I just want to get rid of, and I don't really know how much it's worth, I'll typically start, start it at no reserve meaning it could sell for a dollar. I mean, it, it never does. I've sold seven different sites that way, and all have gone for over ten to 15000 um, you I just do that so that it immediately grabs the attention of everyone because they're like, oh, it, it could sell for a dollar, and this blog's making $2,000 a month plus. So more people are more willing to buy on it and the more bids it pushes it up on their site as being more popular and then more people see it so that's why i do that um i actually want to ask you guys a question because two of you talked about quality content and you know delivering value to your readers and john you specifically said you know don't push out crap people know when it's crap but the truth is i don't know that everybody has the same sort of quality <laughs> level and so you know is it how do you how do people know that what they're creating is quality because to them maybe they think that is quality but it's not uh, well I like <laughs> to think of it in this situation a lot of people are gonna come up and talk to you at this event and some of them are just gonna be annoying and you're gonna want to walk away and if you're providing content like that on your blog they're gonna start reading it and leave so if people don't find value in what you're saying or you're boring 
or whatever. It's just like having a real conversation in life, but it's just in text. But it's that much more harder to convince someone to stick around and read text on your website than it is to someone to talk to you. And people don't want to be rude and just walk away from you, but you're only going to have a few seconds to convince them to actually close out your website or if they're going to stick around and read. So you want to grab their interest and make sure you're offering something compelling that's an av an, of value. And if you find value in it, there's a good chance somebody else will. But if you come out with a post that says, just buy this product and I'll make money from it, then it obviously has no content. But if you do a full review and say why the program is awesome, how you make money with it, give examples of how other people are using it, that's providing value and people are going to keep coming back to your website because they can trust you. We've got right there. Well, you gotta keep in mind that um, when you when you're not using a third-party ad network like Google, then if you want to do ad sales yourself, you're taking away your blogging time to sell advertising. All right, so the big blogs that sell their own ads usually have a separate sales division to sell the ads, so their writers can keep writing. All right? So you have to decide that are you a blogger or are you gonna be an ad sale. Uh, what I do is like I don't all, all the all the ads on my blog are directly so are direct, but I never actually dealt with the advertiser face to face. Uh, I use a plugin called OIO Publisher, OIO Publisher Direct, and that plugin is a ad sales plugin. It sets up an advertised page on your blog, and from the advertised page, you can list all your ad sizes, you can list the price, and it gives you it plugs in an order link so. Someone come, someone come to your blog, go to the advertise page, see your ad option, they click on the order link, takes them to PayPal to pay for it, and after they pay for it, it takes them to an area where you can upload their ad, then it sends you an email, and you can approve it, and once it's approved, it puts it up, you disapprove it, it refunds them, and it's done. In the meantime, so what I do is I have that plugin running, but when I saw that I obviously got no private advertiser, so while you're waiting for the advertiser to show up, it can run Google ads or any other, your, none of your, any other third party ads until you get a sale. So that, that's what I did and I find that now all the ads on there are probably so that there's no space for private or for the third parties anymore. Yeah, so I did not like go out and solicit the private advertiser. They have been, they found me, and they found and because I have the advertise page with the uh, with the script running, they were able to order advertising right directly from my blog. How about right there? When, when looking for an actual value on a website that we sell through Flippa, it's more of a time issue, what it's worth to us and what someone's willing to pay. Right now we have a website listed on Flippa and we're in the process of building it up but we are in the decision of if we want to get rid of it or if we want to keep it. And if the demand is there enough that someone will pay what we're looking for, then we will sell it. We do have a reserve on the auction so if it doesn't hit that amount then we're just going to keep building it up. and keep it part of our network. So a lot of websites are selling based on what they're earning, but sometimes it'll also be based off potential. So page rank, Alexa ranking, and the type of website that it actually is is going to play a lot of value. If you have a website that talks about television shows and people are coming to your website and it's just based on traffic versus a website where people are coming for SEO and pay-per-click marketing services, obviously one has a much higher retail value than people who are just coming to read content while other ones are looking to spend money to improve the services. So it's more of a supply and demand than anything else, but the more information 
and higher Alexa rankings and page rank, that's a huge determination in the final sale price. I think uh, we have a question right here. Oh, I was, oh. I was just going to say one additional thing on there is I add a little bit of value for links. For example, if I sell a blog with not very many links or prestigious links, I, I won't sell it. But for example, the, the blog he's talking about has links from Forbes, from SEO Moz, from Search Engine Land, Search Engine Journal, Search Engine Watch, like very prestigious blogs in that same niche. So I assign a lot greater of a value because we've spent the effort on getting and putting very quality content that gets to those websites. Okay, right in front. Just stick with, there are niches that will never go out of style. And, you know, as weight loss, weight gain, dating, sex, making money, gambling. Yeah, like that, that, there's all those, those kinds. And within, within those main category, there are a whole bunch of different subcategories you can do. One of the things you can find out is you can, you can there are tools you could use to find out what people are searching for. Uh, such as keyword, uh, what's this, keyword elite, uh, market summary. The, um, you could use stuff like Google Trends, and basically the Google Trends will tell you what's currently trending, like what's what people are talking about. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of research for there will will tell you uh, what's hot, and a tool like market summary can not only tell you what's hot, they can tell you the competition in that category. So you can find out. Uh, 100,000 people are searching for this thing every month, but the number of pages supplying that information is not as high. So this, it shows a ratio like comp uh, volume, competition. So what you're looking for is good volume, little competition. Then that, the, that, that allows you to rank a lot easier. I mean, I would also suggest doing things like thinking about things that are coming up and getting ahead of the curve, like, you know, maybe thinking that there's going to be World Cup fever, yes, and Google where's Trends. the World Cup going to be held? And you know, putting links for travel and all sorts of things about Brazil. It, you know, I, I mean, and then you're ahead of the curve before the World Cup starts. Yeah. I, I would also you're always, add, you're always doing your little Valentine thing, you know, yeah. seasonal promotions. Yeah. yeah, anything seasonal. You know, you're going to make money year after year. Kids are going back to school, and you know the parents are going to spend mm -hmm. well over a thousand dollars on stuff for their kids. But most importantly, you need a monetization plan in place. Yeah. If, you're, if you have a website that gets 100,000 people to it every day and you're talking about the Los Angeles Lakers and updating it with trades, that's great. People are coming to your website looking for information. They get to view some pictures, but at the end of the day, you're not going to make any money. You can throw a banner out on there to say buy tickets, but how many people are actually going to be in the Los Angeles area and people aren't going to buy your merchandise. And if they do, you'll get 5% commission. So that's a massive amount of work for little to no money. So focus on finding a niche audience where people are in a buying mode or advertise and cater your blog to businesses that have money, that will spend money, and they want to get in front of the right audience. So make sure you do not waste time blogging about something that you might invest six months to 12 months in and be in the same place the first day you started. Also, uh, make sure you're passionate about it. Because if not, you're going to burn out really quick and you're going to get bored and it'll flop. Especially if you're doing four to six posts a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a question right there. I outsource a lot of it. On ZachJohnson.com, I pretty much write 99% of the posts. On BloggingTips.com, I write maybe 10%, and the other 90% I've outsourced to people that I trust that run other well-known blogs, and I also accept guest posting through those websites. And then uh, on Blogging.org, we actually created a marketplace where people can 
order content that they can place on their blogs. So those are three different ways that we manage our content, write our own content, and outsource our own content. Uh, for, for design work, I've just managed to work with different people over the years, and they come and go. That's all outsourced. I handle all of my own email, billing, everything else. I wouldn't trust outsourcing to anyone. Uh, for 15 years, I've been a one-man company, so pretty much have always done the day-to-day -day operations myself. Um, how about over here? Have you ever sold Uh, my key rule, or my recommended key rule, is basically just run run a third party ad, ad on it, like Google AdSense. Uh, get an idea how much that's making you in a month period of time, and then that's your base. And then double it, minimally double that price. So, so somebody, so if if, you, if Google if the Google ad is making you fifty bucks a month, and someone wants to buy that ad space charge a minimum of $100. And the reason for that is because, well, that's what Google's charging people, because they take half the money. Something else to consider would be uh, a lot of websites like to put advertise here buttons on their page, but that's one of the biggest turnoffs you can do. If there's six spots that say advertise here, obviously no one's advertising. So find who the best people are to advertise on your website and throw up affiliate banners or even free banners then your competition for those banners, see them on your website, and they will want to be there instead of your competition. So they will gladly pay you to be on the website instead of a free link. So you can obviously find advertisers that have competition and are spending money. So that's a great way to find advertisers. Right here. When I first started ZachJohnson.com, I didn't have any advertisements on the website for the first nine months because the main focus was build my readership, let them know that I'm real, the content is real, and I could supply the people who were at my website, which were affiliate marketers, to ad networks, and I would get a kickback from them. But I didn't have to put advertisements on the website because I was actually writing them and using them as real-life examples. So as this continued to grow, I had a massive demand for advertising on the website, and at that point, supply and demand increased the amount of ads that would go on the website, which also influenced the pricing. I, I still don't have any ads on any of my sites. I monetize them in different ways. For the uh, first eight months of Chancha.com, there was no ads on the blog at all. Uh, and the con concentrating was to concentrate on traffic growth. See, when you, when you first start a blog, Everyone wants to make money on it from the get-go, and that's, it's kind of productive. When you first begin, your main job is traffic acquisition and building a readership base. And advertising is kind of productive. See, if you, have an, if you have a Google ad on your blog, in order, for them to make, in order for you to make money, they have to click on the ad, but when they click on the ad, they leave your site. Right? So you're spending all this effort to get through to your blog, only to get them to click on the site, click on the ad, and leave. So uh, in the beginning, all we do is uh, try to build traffic. Uh, we try to get them subscribed to our email list. And then uh, you can monetize later on once you have readership base established. I'm going to go right here. Um, I don't know. I, I typically, if, if it's failing, I'll just sell it really quick and be done with it. So I, I don't know. You have to give each site 
you know, a specific amount of time, and that's really only you can know. I mean, if you're putting a ton, a ton of effort and nobody's coming back to it, maybe you need to readjust what you're doing and apply it, because certain niches aren't going to work for certain, for, you know, doing what I do, you know, four to six blog posts every single day, it's not going to work for specific niches. So I'd really just personally go in, evaluate what I'm doing, and seeing if it's working. Yeah, I, I have the opposite problem. I like to start stuff and never get rid of it. So I have around over 500 domain names and probably a few hundred websites that I've spent time on sat around. And then this year I decided I've had enough of this crap and I'm just letting the domains expire and getting rid of it and focus on what matters because it really comes down to a time issue. And unless you have a, a good system down to outsource the whole process, it's very hard to run multiple websites and get them to an authority status. So I have about three websites that I strictly focus on right now, and I'm just scrapping the rest. I don't care if they expire or sell, just get rid of them and uh, focus on what matters. Right here. You have to be careful about copying and pasting posts from other blogs to put on your blog. Uh, from copyright standpoint, you could get into issues. You are allowed to take an excerpt, right? but you can't take the whole article. Oh, you can't, even if you say this is from... No, no. Right, no, because no, they're no, putting it up that. there so that they can no. drive traffic to their no. website. No, you can't and copy the whole you article. You cannot do that. It's no. against the... Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. What I do is whenever I place a link inside an article, if someone clicks it, it opens up in a new browser window so they don't leave my website, but they can get to the new website through another browser, like it's another tab in the browser. We had a question over here. Uh, so different blogs. I just put together a bunch of guest posts. Uh, is that what you're referring to? Well, if or? you want to find out, like, I want to find out all the, like, highly recognized Oh, Technorati. Blogs. Talking about Technorati? Yeah, te you, Technorati. Technorati yeah, if you're looking for really uh, a site that shows all the popular blogs in different categories, yeah, Technorati is the, uh, the main site that ranks them. Well, we only have time for one more question, so how about... Gentleman, right there. Don't use the same keyword phrase. Uh, that I mean, that's really what Penguin went after really hard. Is people who. For example, I, I used to have a website that did virtual tours for real estate agents, and we optimized virtual tour. That's all we ever put on a million different blogs. We literally had over 20,000 virtual tour links, and we were on page one. Well, when Penguin came around, I hadn't been like longer term, like amazing virtual tour machine, and put that as the and tagged that whole link. I just had virtual tour. That's what Penguin really went after. And so try and tag a lot of different variations. I mean, literally thousands of different variations on your keyword text that you're linking. And try and make sure when you're linking, link to other posts or other pages within your site, not just your main page. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. And I think these guys will probably stick around for a couple of minutes if you want to have any specific questions for them, but thanks a lot to all the panelists and enjoy the rest of the summit.